Hey, what's up guys? KSK here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how to do boot Ubuntu Linux 20.04 LTS with Windows 10. This guide is one of the safest ways to set up a dual boot on any PC or laptop without any data loss. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to remove Ubuntu 20.04 safely from the dual boot. So make sure you watch the video till to the end to avoid any confusion. Now keep in mind, this method is exclusive to UEFI users. For those who are using UEFI and GPT combination on their existing desktop PC or laptop, then this method works flawlessly. And as per my testing, if you follow this video carefully, you will be able to successfully do boot your PC or laptop with Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. If in case your PC is having BIOS or MBR partition scheming, then I made a dedicated video for that. Check the link in the description box down below. Now to check if your computer or laptop is using which mode, I mean is it using legacy BIOS or UEFI mode, type msinfo32 inside the run dialog box and know under the BIOS mode it says the status of your computer. In my case, my system uses the UEFI or GPT partition scheming. And keep in mind, this video is dedicated to UEFI users. Again, I already made a separate video on how to do boot Ubuntu with Windows 10 if your system has booted into legacy BIOS or MBR mode. Check the link to the video in the description box down below. Now, the only prerequisites of this video, you need a Windows 10 running on your PC or laptop. Next, you need an 8GB or higher pen drive to create a bootable disk with Ubuntu Linux. Lastly, you need to reserve a free space of 30GB or higher from your drive. And that being said, moving into step number one, downloading the required files. Now open your favorite browser and go to the official website of Ubuntu Linux and download the latest version. Next up, you need to go to Rufus website and download the Rufus tool which helps in creating a bootable disk with Ubuntu Linux. Step number two, creating bootable drive with Rufus. Now once it's done downloading all of the files, place it somewhere on your desktop computer for easier navigation. Now go ahead and connect the pen drive to your PC or laptop and right click on the Rufus and run as administrator. Now inside Rufus, choose the drive letter of your pen drive. In this case, my drive letter is showing here. I'm going to leave it as a default. Then under the boot selection, click on the select option to import the ISO image file. Now go ahead and look for the Ubuntu image file in your computer and open it. Now you can leave the partition scheme as GPT and the target system as UEFI. Then click on the stop button to burn the ISO image into the pen drive. Now sit back and relax, the process will take some time depending on the writing speed of your pen drive. Step number three, installing Ubuntu. Now go ahead and reboot your computer. While rebooting your PC or laptop, press F10 on your keyboard to open the boot menu. Here you can select your drive name. In this case, it is showing my pen drive as SanDisk. I'm gonna choose this option to boot Ubuntu Live Setup. You can only use this boot menu option if your pen drive is not automatically booting into Ubuntu Setup.
Now, when you are inside the live setup of Ubuntu, go ahead, click on install Ubuntu. Now, first you need to set up a language. In this case, I'm going to use English as a default language and then click on next. Now, for keyboard layout, choose the English United States as default option. And next up in this section, I would choose the normal installation that installs all of the basic tools. For now, I'm going to uncheck this option to speed up the installation process. And make sure you take this option to install any third-party media codecs and additional graphic or Wi-Fi drivers. Then click on continue. Next up, it shows the installation screen. In this video, I'm going to choose the first option that will install Ubuntu along the side with Windows 10. This process will automatically create a partition for Ubuntu. And the second option helps to completely erase a disk and install a fresh copy of Ubuntu on a brand new hard drive or SSD. So if you're planning to install Ubuntu on a separate drive, you can choose this option. But for now, just for the sake of this video, I will be using the easiest option that makes our job very easy. Once you select install along your side with Windows option, then we're gonna take you to this page. Now, the Ubuntu installer will automatically detect the drive where Windows have installed and shrink the minimum space of 30 GB for Ubuntu. If you want to allocate a more than 830 GB, then you can use this slider to increase the space for Ubuntu. For now, I'm okay with 30 gigs and leave as default. Now choose install now option and accept the changes. Now go ahead, choose your time zone and create a user account by entering the details. Now sit back and relax, the installation process will take 5-20 to 20 minutes depending on the writing speeds of your drive. Now once it's done, go ahead and restart your computer by removing the bootable media. Now your system should boot into the Grub Bootloader from here, you can either boot into Ubuntu 20.04 or Windows 10. For now, let's boot into Ubuntu. Now, as you can see, Ubuntu 20.04 looks awesome. Everything works like magic. If you want to know what's new in Ubuntu 2020, I will leave a link to the video in the description box down below. Go ahead and watch it. And that's it, guys. This is how you do boot Ubuntu 20.04 with Windows 10. Now as a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Ubuntu and decided to uninstall it, then reboot your computer to Windows 10.
Now open Disk Manager by typing this command inside the command prompt or run dialog box. Here you can see next to C drive Ubuntu partition is located. Just go ahead and delete this partition. Once it's deleted, you can use this unallocated space to extend the C drive. Now go ahead, type CMD and run as administrator. Then inside the command prompt, type disk part. Once it's done, type list disk. This will show all of the connected drives to the computer. In my case, I have connected only one drive, which is where Windows has installed. Now select this drive by typing select disk and the number of the disk. This will select the disk. Now type list partition to list out all of the partitions on this drive. You might see three plus partitions here. What we need to do is we have to use the system partition to remove the grub bootloader from the drive. To do so, select partition 2, which is a system partition, by typing this command. Once it's selected, Type assign space letter equals to X to mount this partition temporarily. Now type exit to get out of the disk manager. Now type X colon. This will change the directory. Here type dir to list the contents of that partition. Now change the directory into EFI by typing cd space EFI. Again, if I type a DIR, this will list the contents of the EFI folder. Here you can see Ubuntu bootable files, and you have to delete this folder, otherwise your system will be stuck in a grub bootloader that looks like this. Anyway, to fix that kind of issue, type this command, rd space ubuntu and forward slash s and remove the ubuntu. And that's it, now we have successfully removed Ubuntu. Now restart your computer, it should boot your system into Windows 10 and you won't face any grub issues. This is how you properly set up a dual boot on your Windows computer or laptop. And that's pretty much it, if in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider clicking the bell button to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching. This has been KSK Ryle. I will catch you in my next one. Peace. Yeah, I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you're the right girl. So I can only say that it feels right. It feels right. It feels right.